Hi and welcome to the small escape. I am super excited today because I get to bring you a scape. It's right back there that I set up for some really cool inhabitants, mainly the candy cane tetra. Yes, I have a little group of them, really cool fish, and I have my own little band of quarries that I also put in there. There's a, a few other little little guys in there too that I'll share with you. But a little background to this tank, it's an 11 gallon bookshelf tank and there's actually a nine gallon bookshelf tank right underneath it that would be just for plants. And these are both kind of taking the place of a 12 gallon bookshelf tank that was at the very top that got dismantled and given to Mr. Prime time for his purposes. And uh, so a little bit of shuffling around, but stay tuned for what I replaced that 12 gallon with on the top. That's coming up pretty soon too. Really excited about that one too. But let's get to this video I'm gonna share with you this uh, tank that I just escaped and I appreciate you stopping by. Hopefully you enjoy it and uh, let's take a look. All right, so I'm gonna start off talking about the actual tank. It's a lifeguard tank. It's a bookshelf uh, tank at 11 gallons. And thank you once again to Lifeguard Aquatics for sending out these bookshelf tanks. They're super fun and I know they're very, very popular. I know a lot of you guys really, really like them for a lot of different reasons. Um, and there's a lot of horizontal swimming space. So that's why I'm able to get these Tetras in here. But the dimensions, just so you know, of this tank are approximately 30 inches by six inches by uh, eight inches tall. So that gives you a good idea, but it fits really nice on the shelving that we have in the Nano Nook. Really love this tank. And as you can see, there are two sponge filters that and they are off right now for video purposes. And also there is no lid right now. We have a lid made uh, kind of uh, that I made for it, but for, for video purposes, it is not on yet. But it's always a good idea to have a lid on your tank, especially if you're gonna have a betta or any other fish that may jump. Because we are very limited on the power we have in the basement, we are kind of at capacity. That's why I'm using two sponge filters. I probably would not choose to do that. They're not really my favorite. I prefer hang on backs. But at some point we may even switch to smaller sponge filters, but right now this is what we had in stock and this is what I'm using. I attempted originally to hide them behind the scaping, but it didn't work. There just isn't enough depth in the tank, but this will work out just fine. And these filters are used. The uh, sponges are from another tank, so it was already ready to go, uh, kickstarting the cycle there. Now let's talk about the stocking. For this tank, I always start with some sort of an inspiration and the inspiration was to get these candy cane tetras a scape that was kind of fun, especially since Christmas is here. I thought what better fun than to make them their very own island, candy cane island. It's a kind of a legit scape, so it's not uh, some of the scapes that maybe you've seen that I've done before, maybe illuminated or other fun stuff, which I'm not, I'm not saying that I won't be doing that yet this year, but this one is just a legit scape and it's an island style with everything centered in the center with the, everything is built on the Seri stone and also some used uh, spider wood that I got from other tanks and also just sitting around that I wanted to create up the uh, focal point all in the center. Now, in addition to these candy cane Tetras, which I just love, there's eight of them in there. I also have one sparkling grammy I have one male betta that I received as a gift from Kasha at Creative Pet Keeping. Once again, thank you Kasha for bringing that to me. We were at the GCCA swap this weekend and she brought him as a gift and we decided we were gonna put him in this tank right away and he's working out really great. He's very, very mellow and he's a very sweet little boy. He's a marble placat. He's a, uh, uh, also what's known as a panda koi. He's very beautiful and he's, he's just really, really sweet. So far, his name very possibly will be Oreo because he's got really dark black eyes that look like little teeny tiny Oreos. And of course, he's black and white. The last little critter we have in here is one super red bristle nose, which adds a lot of color when you can see him creeping around the tank. Really fun. Love the bristle nose, especially the super reds. And, and of course, with a, with a candy cane theme, why not? Now, those of you familiar with this channel, you're probably stunned that I've gone with, yes, white sand. 
I was gonna get sand colored sand, I had it ready to go, but I decided for this, especially with candy cane theme, have to go with snow, which would be the white sand. You never know, at some point very soon, I may cap it off with uh, darker kind of sand colored sand or even larger gravel and start mixing that in. I would not put that past me, but at this point, I'm just gonna do my best to keep it clean. I don't have any really messy fish like I've had in the past, like pea puffers or uh, my, my baddest in here making a super, super mess, but we'll see how long I can keep it looking nice. So far, I think it's just a very, very striking combo. That's why I really wanted a lot of black and white to kind of showcase the fish. Now let's talk about the plants. With a theme like candy canes, I wanted really fun, fun plants. And this is the scape that I thought would be really fun to use the corkscrew valve. I just did a video on that. I love corkscrew valve. It's very, it's, it's just a great plant. If you've never tried it, if you're afraid of aquatic plants, or if you have a lot of aquatic plants, I highly, highly recommend corkscrew valve because it is fun, it is really hardy, and it, it grows via runners and it'll fill up your tank. It grows really, really nicely. And I just love it because it's, well, it's it's spirally, it's fun. And, and then I added some other plants that I thought would give really fun texture like bulbitis. I only had two pretty decent sized pieces, but that's in there. And a variety of different Anubias, which I do have some growing out the top of the tank, which I love. And then Anubias Nana Petite in the front because that's also just a cute little tiny texture. I did also along the back, I added some Rotala, Rotundifolia. I only had a few little pieces that are tall enough to see in the back, but it does turn a little very soft red at the top, which highlights the theme of the tank for candy canes. I did include a couple of what I call cheats. So filling up that center with an island style scape, it's, it's a base of rocks, at least, from my understanding, how I'm kind of trying to pull off an island style. You have a lot of rocks forming the island with wood coming out of it interspersed and then a whole lot of plants in the center. Now, if you run out of plants or you don't have enough plants, here's a suggestion for some cheats. I have wads, two wads of subwasser tang and also some moss in there that look like plants Maybe it gives an appearance of more plants at the at the start because a lot of times when you're starting out a tank, you're gonna have plants that are younger, smaller, they're not as full and taking up as much space as maybe you like. Just like in the gardening world, you're gonna plant smaller plants. But this is a great way to kind of stretch the uh, what actually is really in there. I also included one little small little moss ball in the front just because well, I thought it would be fun. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the scape and I will see you next time.